Hello Internet. Welcome back to Benton Homestead on Omishima Island in rural Ehime, Japan. This is the back side of our second Akia abandoned house here on Omishima. The first house is just around the corner. It's now our guest house. And this is a former ryokan, Japanese inn, that was abandoned for 40 years before we purchased it. So we have a lot of items here to go through. If you've watched some of our recent videos, I've been working on the garage and I meant to mix things up and I was going to start going through some of the other rooms inside the house, but the garage has been bumped up on our priority list as we've done some thinking about how things are going to work best in the future. And we've decided that it would probably be better to turn this garage into Evan's honeybee workshop instead of the garage at the guest house. So my new priority, while Evan works on the garden and the bees, I will be cleaning this up and getting it ready to become the honeybee workshop. I apologize if I sound a little sniffly in this video. But Evan and I are working through some allergies that we got hit with this week. But it's worth it for this beautiful view. Before I dive into these remaining items to unbox here in the garage, just a very quick refresh is that my husband Evan and I are both foreigners living in rural Japan. We arrived here last February and worked towards getting the startup visa, which is only available in certain parts of Japan. It's part of the reason that we chose Imabari City and how we ended up here on beautiful Omishima Island. After six months of renovating our first Akia abandoned house into a guest house, which is now welcoming guests on Airbnb, we successfully turned our startup visa into the one-year business manager visa. Our business, Benton Homestead, is actually a Kabushiki Gaisha, which is a Japanese corporation. Even though it is technically just my husband, Evan, and myself running the business. So there was a lot of paperwork involved, uh, the help of some Japanese businessmen. We have an immigration lawyer, a business consultant, and an accountant, as well as a scrivener, which is like a junior lawyer who has helped with a lot of our paperwork to get to this point. I wish I had a more beautiful background to show you while I am running through the short version of our story, but this is where I am, so this will have to do. Our business, Benton Homestead, is a multifaceted business that is one part farm and honeybee business, agricultural, as well as one part guest house and some additional things that we'll be working into the business, including my photography. I've been a photographer for most of my adult life, and a vintage and retro shop, both online and in person. Evan has also been staying really busy doing some translation work, working with uh, foreign buyers and uh, Japanese sellers for real estate and property transactions. That is a uh, side of our business that we didn't expect to have happen, but we were contacted by a local realtor who is the realtor that we use to purchase our two properties, and uh, he suggested this business idea to us, and we already have two clients. So that was an unexpected surprise, but fortunately, our business was incorporated with uh, vague enough terms and general umbrella terms that we uh, can easily add consulting as an aspect of our business here in Japan. And long story short is that I just really like to share all of this data and information because when we were starting this process, there was not a lot of information out there that I was looking for. So I write blogs and I make videos sharing our process every step of the way and I'll continue to do so. So if you're considering starting a business in Japan, applying for the startup visa, uh, starting a guest house in Japan, purchasing an Akia abandoned house, anything like that, 
Odds are that we are going to or have already made some videos on the topic and would be happy to help answer any questions that you might have along the way if it's something that we're experienced in or we can point you in the right direction of professionals who can help you even better. But now on to the good stuff. Let's get started. In case you haven't watched some of our earlier videos about the history of this house and the unboxing of the items inside, when we purchased the house last year, we were originally told that the house had been abandoned for at least 20 years, and then uh, we realized that was sort of a figure of speech. And uh, from talking to neighbors and um, other people who knew the house, we've been determined that it was closer to 40 years, or 40 years exactly. So uh, we estimated that it's been empty without anyone living in it since about 1983 or 1984, which interestingly are the years that Evan and I were born. So it's likely that this house has not had anyone living in it for the duration of our lives. However, here in the garage we see items like this tea tin that has a date of 1988. And we've realized that a lot of the items in the garage were put here after the house was abandoned by the former owner's now elderly son, who is the man that we purchased the house from. So a lot of the things in this garage he was using as storage. So this is the only part of the house that really has any items beyond uh, about 1970 or so. Most of the items in the house are from the 1940s to the 1970s. This is a bag full of plastic bags, which I would not usually be excited about, but it's a cute little illustration of this dog taking his trash to clean town, and I can use these as garbage bags at the guest house, so they will get used instead of just thrown away. In addition to a couple dozen gift towels, there's this nice map of Matsuyama, where, interestingly, we will be traveling to in a few weeks to work on getting our Japanese driver's licenses. As our neighbors would say, mas." I think a lot of these little gift towels would be easily passed over, but I know that that says Omishima, so we're going to have to read all of these and see if any of them are local businesses or anything interesting like that. This box was packed in 1987, and it seems to be a lot of the plastic ware that was probably used when our house was functioning as an inn and restaurant. Here we have some more sleeves of dish sets. This is a really beautiful pattern. As we go through the boxes, the last ones remaining here in the garage, my guess is that we're going to find mostly dishes, so let's see if we get a surprise today or if it goes as expected. Well, I stand corrected. First box I open and we have an interesting piece of massage equipment. Everybody's driving by right now, so I apologize for the car noise, but the noon bell just rang and everybody actually goes to lunch right at noon. So as I get down to the point of pulling off one of the bottom boxes off the top of this cupboard here, this is my first glimpse behind the cupboard and I'm realizing that the boxes just keep going. So folks, we've got a lot more to go. All right, the newspaper on this one says 1980. That's a nice box of dishes. This box says 31 of these dishes and that is an accurate count. A full box of these. A full box of these, a whole box of these, two really nice gift boxes. Now here's a couple of interesting things. I don't know if these are actually decorative or if they are for uh, making Japanese pickles. Um, so those are little wooden barrels and they've got the wooden lid that's the same as the uh, pickling crock lids. So if anybody knows about that, I'm sure Evie knows the answer, but he's not here right now. Also, this basket here, I found a few of these. This is the only one that's in a reasonable shape. It's a uh, woven basket with a metal lining. So again, I'm just speculating. I might be way off. But I wonder if this is for uh, moving the charcoal pieces around from the fire to the hibachi heaters. So I'm going to uh, ask on that one and see if my guess is correct. 
wonder if this is going to need any updating. I like that Evan's future honeybee workshop comes with a pre-installed scotch whiskey poster. And whoever that cool guy is. Well, speaking of whiskey, I've got these mismatched whiskey cups. Some aluminum cookware with a cute red lid. A drink set. And this plastic set, boy, it looks cute, but it's hard to know if that's just going to be incredibly brittle when you touch it and uh, fall apart if you try to use it. More aluminum cookware, definitely used. Any of you out there fishing guys? What is this? Is it a crab pot? It's one of the fishing things that seems to be in decent shape. Also, I'm not a fan of the big blue tarp, but I will definitely use this to kill weeds in the short term. But seriously, whatever you do, please don't use synthetic ropes. These are so gross. Yuck. Who needs scissors? Alright, skipping forward in time a few hours and we've made a ton of progress. I wasn't filming every little step of the way because I had a surprise visitor. A friend who we originally met on Instagram last year came to visit and Evan is helping do some translation for their property purchase here on Omishima and he was nice enough to come over and spend a few hours working on these fishing nets. So he's cutting the metal out of them for me and then putting the net here in the burnable garbage to be collected. Believe it or not, I didn't ask for his help, and he just offered to come keep me company while I was working in the garage, so it was really nice to have some company this afternoon. So at this point, I'm left with this recycling that still needs sorted, and we got a few bags taken down to the collection site today, mostly old plastic that had turned brittle and some yucky fabric that I found. I've gotten over a dozen boxes taken into the house for further cleaning and organizing and I'm left with these boxes here which I wanted to show you guys first before I moved into the house. As you can see I made it through all these boxes that were stacked down to the floor behind this cupboard here so we're really making progress. Here we have a wooden framed Toshiba speaker which we think was part of a home intercom system because there are a few others that are a different color but similar style throughout the house. But these three wooden pieces actually made me do a double take because we have nearly identical carvings over at our first Akia, which is now Benton Guest House. I'm going to have to get some pictures of these side by side because they really are almost identical and it seems strange to have the, the bear with the salmon in both houses. Uh, just a just an interesting connection between our two abandoned houses. These box of slippers can't be saved because they've degraded to the point of being crispy. But just look at those colors. Going along with the 70s orange theme, this is an old style dish drying rack. And we actually don't have one here, so we're going to be putting this to use. Any guesses what these are? My instinct says kitchen items, but I'm not sure. Now, in previous videos, sorting through the garage, I've shown you guys lots and lots of things, so I really don't just want to bore you to death, and I only want to show you the more interesting things that we're finding. Uh, now, this there's two different glass sets here, and this is interesting because it's actually a raised texture on top of the glass, so that's something I haven't seen before. I might actually swap these glasses out for the ones that I currently have at the guest house because those just match my pink kitchen perfectly. Here's some nice vintage box design. And this is interesting. This is a glass tray with a removable handle. This is a cute glass set with both large glasses and small ones that say Suntory. And this is our first time seeing some extra large coffee mugs with old automobiles on them. 
but these might be my favorite glasses that we've found yet. Golden with sunflowers. All right, guys, look at that. We made it to the end of the boxes over here. So now I'm just going to do some cleaning and go take a shower. Okay, guys, back at it again today. This is the cleanest this garage has been in at least 40 years. But we still have a lot to do. My battle plan for this morning is to spend some time breaking some things down and moving a few things inside. This is, of course, going to temporarily really clutter up one room inside the house. But all these crates are glass jars that will eventually be used for pickles that were uh, at one point cleaned. We found them in the other house garage. We moved them over to this house garage. Now they'll be moving inside. Then I'll have to decide what to do with all these doors in the back corner. If they are usable, if they're water damaged, what's going on back there. I think, ugh, I really don't like moving things around from one spot to another, but we don't want them here in the honeybee workshop. We also don't really have room for them inside the house, so they might go over to the guest house garage and be stored with the other doors that are stored over there already. These are fertilizers and chemicals, so we're going to move those with the other chemicals that we haven't been able to get rid of yet and we'll slowly work on finding a way to properly dispose of them. These tires will go on our next trip to the metal recycling. We were told that they do collect tires with rims and then properly dispose of the tires themselves while recycling the rims. Also, thanks to our friend helping us out, this is all that's left of that fishing net that we need to get the metal pieces off of. Getting there. Okay, we're shuttling all these doors over to the other garage so that we can convert this into my workshop. And we're finally getting into these doors. And these are super cool. I wish that there wasn't so much water damage at the bottom. That's going to make at least that part of it unusable. But I love the design, so we're going to see what we can do with these in the future. Here's a frosted glass pattern we haven't seen yet. Look at these stately beauties. All rotted out at the bottom, unfortunately. I haven't seen anything this big or this clear yet, and I have no idea where these came from in the house. It's really thick glass, too, and these doors are just super heavy. Here we are, the big reveal. Looks pretty good, all cleaned up. Except for this corner. The big hole you see in the ceiling, uh, it's not actually that big if you get up and look through it, but you can see little pinpricks of daylight coming through. So anyway, all that damage on the wall is coming from rainwater seeping down. Here we are on the outside. And you can see there's some damage to this wall as well. It seems like when it rains, the water is pooling up on the roof and seeping down through the wall on the inside and the outside. We believe there's more than one contributing factor at play here. The biggest one, though, is possibly that this rain gutter was disconnected at the joint up there. So Evan climbed up on the roof and reconnected it. You can see all the damage that was done to the left side on that uh, shikui plaster wall right there. That is from residual rainfall over many years, just washing directly from the roof down onto that wall instead of into the rain gutter. So the next time it rains, we're going to climb up on the garage roof here and see if there is any water puddling on it. In which case, that means it might just be a clogged gutter that's also contributing to it. If this one here isn't keeping the roof drained off, that might be the only other thing that we need to fix in order to stop any more damage from occurring. By the way, these are my avocados that I brought from Mexico. So once we get that leak taken care of, we can address the mold issue, and then this will become my honeybee workshop. 
Neighbor lady just drove by with some onions, and guess what? I just discovered that this second garage door also used to have sliding doors here. So maybe some of those cool doors we showed you earlier in the video came from right here. Thank you very much for watching, whether you're new to the channel or you've been following us all along. We are only 250 watch hours away from being able to do live videos and only 1250 watch hours away from monetization. So every video you watch of ours helps us get closer to that goal. Thanks for watching. Benton Homestead, over and out. Nice. This is Bosco's friend, Maron. Hi, Maron. Bosco. Bosco, is that your friend? Is that your friend over there?